Hi everyone. How's everybody doing? That look good. See that? Perfect brown. Let me see if I can get you to see it. Brown on that side, cooked on that side. Then you serve it with some of your sauce. Doesn't that look good? Boom. That is so good. And then you cool it just enough so you can cut it and eat it. If you really want to wait that long. But these are soft and tender. Woohoo! Look at that. Steamy. Today I am going to make calzone as a request. Sherry from South Shore, Massachusetts asked me to cook a calzone on live. And so I told Sherry I would. So we're gonna make two different calzones. People think of calzones as savory, but they can also be sweet. Some people make their own pizza crust, some don't. But calzone basically is a fold over anything you want to put in the middle. So today we're going to um, start with making the pizza dough, which is kind of interesting because Pizza dough doesn't need to raise like regular bread dough. You just need to make it, let it set five minutes, and boom, you're ready to go. Um, or you can buy it in the tubes. I'll show you one way I do that. Or you can, um, I know in Jersey, they sell the pizza dough in bags already made. You just take it home, roll it out, and make pizza. So whatever you choose, you, you know, it can't be a round, like, bubble or whatever it is. It has to be regular pizza dough. Calzones can be very interesting and they can be so fun. You know, I'm all about cooking as a family and getting your hands in and teaching your kids. Because they have their hands in it, they're likely to eat it. Especially if they've cooked it themselves. So today, I'm going to show you how to make a really easy easy peasy pizza dough okay so i have a big bowl here but i have a small bowl here and what you're going to do is you need to put the yeast and it's just one package of yeast into the bowl with one cup of warm water and sugar you have to have sugar with the yeast to get it to activate it's kind of a you know kind of a thing but you don't want your water so hot that you're going to kill the yeast. You want your water about 170. So I'm gonna come over here and turn this on. So you're gonna put your one package of yeast in here. And then you're going to put your sugar. And it's just one teaspoon of white sugar. Okay, and you're going to stir this up and you're going to let it set for a little bit. You want it to get creamy looking almost and a little like foamy. Okay, there we go. And then in your big bowl, you're going to put two and a half cups of flour, okay? And you know what? If you want to use bread flour, you can use bread flour, but regular flour is fine. Just make sure you... So you're going to put two and a half cups of bread, of flour. This is just all-purpose flour. Either one is fine, okay? And a half. So then, um, <laughs> yep, so we're going to put the sugar over here. So in the flour, you're going to add your salt, okay, one teaspoon of salt. Hi, Dawn. So one teaspoon of salt, 
And then once this sets a little bit, we're gonna stir the flour and salt and everything together. You have that. Then once your yeast and sugar get kind of milky, you see how it's gotten milky? Then we're gonna add the oil to that and then mix it to that, okay? And I'm using olive oil, just plain old olive oil, okay? And you're going to add two tablespoons. Just like that. And then we're gonna mix it in here, okay? So you have yeast, sugar, warm water, flour, olive oil, and salt. And then you're gonna mix it in here. Ooh. I don't know about you, but I just love the smell of yeast when you hit it with the flour. It's one of those things. It just smells good. So I'm gonna put a little flour on my hands. Just put it in here. And I'm gonna mix this together. So anyway, let me show you the bread, the pizza dough. See that? Just put it into a ball and you're gonna let it rest. Just like that. Isn't that nice? You're gonna let it rest. I always go around the bowls. I don't know why I do that, just to get all the rest of the flour. And you're gonna let it rest just in five minutes or so while we make the filling. Let me wash my hands. So on top of the stove, we're just gonna let this rest. We are going to, um, yeah, favorite smell, isn't it? We're gonna put one pound of hamburger Just however much hamburger you want. And I'm just using one of these logs I had in the freezer. Because you're going to make sure you drain it really well. And um, flavor it really well. And we're going to make sure that it gets pretty broken up. Anyway, when I made the fresh lumpy, I had leftover bell peppers. So I just chopped them up and put them in the freezer. So I just got some out here. I chopped some garlic, two cloves of garlic, about one fourth cup of bell peppers. Okay, we're gonna start browning it. Yes, I sharpened my knife before I started my show today. So let's see if I can do it without cutting my fingers. So this is about half an onion. If you want more onion, by all means, it's your kitchen, add more onion. So anyway, I have onions, peppers, and I have two cloves of garlic that I'm gonna put in this. This is pizza, after all. Then, while we're waiting for the hamburger to cook, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the sauce for your pizza. We're going to take a small saucepan. You want one 15 ounce can of just regular old tomato sauce. I know, isn't that the truth, Mary? Kids don't, they're too much on their computers. When my mom said go out and play, we went out and played. Climb a tree, hike the mountain. You know, kids don't know how to go out and play anymore. So anyway, then with your tomato sauce, it, the thick and hearty A1 is the best to use. You're gonna add half a cup of this to your, if you don't have thick and hearty, that's okay. Just use regular A1 sauce. But if you're gonna go out and buy it for this recipe, try to get the thick and hearty. And it's pretty inexpensive. You're going to put, um, where's my measuring? We're okay. One teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Okay? Whoop. 
just like that. And if you want more of something, remember Italian seasoning has um, margarine, thyme, rosemary, sage, and basil. So if you want more of one, by all means, put it in there. Make all it will make it do is taste better to what you like. Okay, we're gonna stir this up. And we're gonna put it on the stove and we're gonna bring it to a boil at first. Okay. We're going to show you. Does that look good? See how the extra grease, you want to make sure that you drain all that off. Okay, you want the onions to be translucent. And the bell peppers to be just kind of soft. But you don't want to really brown it too much. Okay, as soon as this comes to boil, which it has, I'm going to strain the hamburger. And this sauce is to a boil. So we're going to actually take one cup of sauce and you're going to add it to your hamburger. Okay? So you have one cup of sauce in here. You're going to let this simmer and let the sauce finish simmering while we make the the calzone part, the bread part. Okay. So you're just gonna put a little flour out here and we're going to tear off a piece here. See if I can, I'll do it that way. And basically anything your family likes, you can put in a calzone. Calzone basically is a type of folded pizza pie. Go to or whatever has different, you know, different ways to make their calzones. But that's okay. I have a pan here. I put tin foil on. You know me, I'm going to spray butter flavored Pam on there. Okay. Then in the middle here, I forgot the cheese. Of course I forgot. Let's get some shredded mozzarella. You know. Remember, it's your kitchen and you can put whatever you want in there. So what you're going to do, you're going to roll it out and right kind of in the middle, you're going to put... Um, And then you add cheese. Cheese is a good part, right? So whatever your family likes, if you want totally get whatever your family likes, then you're going to fold it over this way. And then we're gonna put this on the baking sheet. Just poke a few, not a lot, you don't want it to tear, you want it to breathe when you bake it. So you just want a hole for the steam to escape. And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna put it right on your baking sheet, just like that. So I'm gonna put these in the oven while I show you and these go in there just about 20 minutes till they're really golden brown because the filling is already done. You're just cooking the outside. Okay. All right. So I want to show you about dessert pizza. I have, this is a 13 inch pie pan, but you don't have to have a pie pan. 
by all means don't run out and buy one because you think you need one so what we're gonna do is um, I still have some dough left here and I'm gonna roll this out to probably about 10 inches okay so anyway this is a 13 inch and we're going to just roll this out pretty thin okay But, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, I know, we were cooking pies one time, and the crust, you know, like I said, you always have to go in a different direction. So we had all these pie crusts, and the teacher was gonna bake it. We had a convention going on for the teachers, and um, they all shrank. So the poor teacher ended up having to make more pie crusts. It was, it was kind of funny, but not really. You know, this pie pan has a kind of holes in the bottom, so it gets it cooking a little more. So I'm gonna hold it over the sink to spray it, just so you know it doesn't go through the holes. All right, let me set that there. So what you have is about I this is all the white chocolate chips I had left. Whoops, sorry. And I had some dark chocolate chips. You want about one third cup each. And you're going to put them in here, starting with the white. Then you're going to use a little bit of the dark chocolate. Put it right next to that. And you can do this kind of however many you want, as long as you make sure that you pinch it. And then that you're going to fold it over with the white chocolate. Okay? And you're going to pinch it down. Make sure the ends are pinched and closed. You don't want anything coming out. Okay. I'm gonna fold it up and just make sure it's pinched. Cause you don't want it popping open and cause you're gonna get all that chocolate everywhere. So I'm gonna take the fork and just press it to make sure it's all stuck together, just like that. Just so it looks kind of pretty. It's just little holes, which is good. Okay, then I'm going to put this on this. I wonder why calzones are always kind of moon shaped. Never thought about that much, but anyway. So if you want to do it was like a refrigerator pizza dough, you do the same thing. You put a little flour, you roll it out a little bit, and you can fold it over with your chocolate chips or whatever sweetness you want to do, okay? And you serve it with chocolate sauce and a scoop of ice cream when it's still hot. Very, very good, okay? We're gonna turn our sauce off. Ooh, so you're gonna serve your calzone from the oven with some of this sauce and I gotta tell you, the A1 just makes that so good. Okay. Let's see if the, woo, let me show you the calzone. I want you to see how it looks cooking. Look at that. Can you see that? Woo, they puff up. Turn your oven up to 450 and you only cook this for seven to 10 minutes because you don't want it to burst out. You want to just get the pizza dough cooked, okay? So that makes it really good. If you want to be specific with your pizza dough, 
use a napkin when you roll it out and so you can kind of get a square then you can fold it over and pinch it in a triangle it's totally up to you you pinch the sides and do the fork if you want little triangles so I want to use the rest of my stuff and I was so hoping see if you want to do like squares take a napkin you know this is what kind of the square would be right just cut it that way and make smaller calzones you know so just make sure you poke a little holes in that so that you let your air escape but not too many that it cuts open there we go. I broke that one a little bit, but that's okay. Did I get a hole in that? Yes. This one broke a little open, but that's okay. Look at that. Woohoo! Now we're going to turn the oven up to 450 to cook our dessert pizza. Doesn't that look good? See that? perfect brown let me see if I can get you to see it brown on that side cooked on that side then you serve it with some of your sauce doesn't that look good boom that is so good and then you cool it just enough so you can cut it and eat it if you really want to wait that long but these are soft and tender Woohoo! look at that steamy so anyway, I gotta let it cool a little more. I hope you've enjoyed cooking with Mama Pearl. I'm gonna get the rest in the oven and have a great lunch. I love everybody. I'm so thankful that you watch my show. If you want me to cook something for you, email me at lessforgot at gmail.com and I would be happy to look it up. I've cooked some great recipes from the UK in different countries and it's fun to research and get those recipes i still think about that cornflake tart i love it from uk i hope you have a great weekend we love you all and happy eating remember it's your kitchen do it your way you can put anything you want in the calzone all right everybody have a good weekend thank you We're still here in Moni, Utah, and it's been weird. It started raining, and then it snowed, and now it stopped. 